This video will provide you with some facts about the disease in your heart arteries called coronary artery disease and heart attack. Understanding how your heart works and how to look after it can make a big difference to your recovery. The heart is a powerful muscular pump that drives blood around your body. To keep your heart healthy, it needs to get a good supply of blood containing oxygen from the coronary arteries. At birth, your arteries are wide open, but over the years, fatty deposits can lead to plaque buildup in the walls, known as coronary heart disease. For some people, this process happens without causing any symptoms, but for others, narrowed arteries can cause symptoms of angina or potentially lead to a heart attack. The extent and severity of the disease will vary from person to person. Angina. If you have coronary heart disease, arteries can narrow so that they no longer supply enough blood for the demands of the heart muscle. This may cause you to experience the pain or discomfort of angina. Angina usually occurs with exertion when the narrowed arteries cannot deliver enough oxygen enriched blood to meet the demands of the heart muscle at that time. But it can also, very rarely, occur when you are resting. Although angina is caused by an inadequate blood flow to the heart muscle, there is still a flow of blood and therefore the heart muscle is not damaged. Heart attack. Acute coronary syndrome is a clinical term describing either a heart attack or unstable angina. A heart attack occurs when the plaque in the narrowed arteries is damaged or inflamed. A crack appears in the artery lining and the blood clot forms around this area, blocking the artery completely and starving the heart of oxygen. This causes damage to the heart muscle. The symptoms of a heart attack vary widely from severe pain in the centre of the chest to mild chest discomfort. It is often described as an ache, discomfort, heaviness, pressure, tightness, a restriction, or sometimes just a feeling of being short of breath. Pain or discomfort may be felt in the chest, but could also travel up into the neck, throat, or jaw. Pain can also be felt in one or both arms, and also in the back between the shoulder blades. Other symptoms you may experience whilst having a heart attack include being sweaty, feeling lightheaded, or feeling or being sick. If you think you are having a heart attack, call 999 immediately. Dialing 999 and obtaining medical assistance as quickly as possible can save your life and will greatly reduce the risk of damage to your heart. During a heart attack, there may be a serious disturbance in the heart rhythm that could be life-threatening and could lead to the risk of cardiac arrest. This is when the heart stops pumping and resuscitation is needed straight away. A cardiac arrest needs immediate medical treatment and sometimes an electric shock is delivered. This is known as defibrillation and can be successful in restoring a normal heartbeat. If this happened to you, please ask your nurse for further information. Not all cardiac arrests occur as a result of a heart attack. After a heart attack and treatment, the area of damaged heart muscle recovers over a two to three month period, but an area of scar tissue may remain. Many people ask, will I have another heart attack? There are no guarantees for anyone, but once the first few days are over, the chances of having another heart attack are reduced and become less as time goes on. Adopting a healthy lifestyle and taking the prescribed medication will reduce the risk. Tests. This video takes a look at the most common tests you will have if brought into hospital with a suspected heart attack or acute coronary syndrome. When you arrive at hospital or when the paramedics are called to you and a heart attack is suspected, the paramedic, doctor or nurse will be looking for signs that the blood clot has completely blocked or is partially blocking one of your coronary arteries. Coronary angiogram. You may be required to have a coronary angiogram. This test involves looking inside the coronary arteries for disease. A small tube is placed into your artery through your wrist or groin. A fine tube is passed through until it reaches the arteries of the heart. A special dye that shows up on x-rays is injected through the tube into the coronary arteries. It's filmed using an x-ray camera placed over your chest. The images are shown on an x-ray screen and will show any narrowing or blockages in the coronary arteries. In the case of a heart attack, often an angioplasty and stent insertion is performed during the angiogram. A catheter tube with a small balloon and a fine mesh tube called a stent on the end is inserted through your artery up into the coronary artery. When the balloon reaches the narrowing, it is inflated so that it squashes the fatty tissue against the artery wall. The stent is pushed open with the inflation of the balloon and beds into the artery lining to hold the vessel open, allowing an oxygen-rich blood supply to return to the heart muscle. Echocardiogram. We know a heart attack can cause some damage to the heart muscle, so to understand whether the heart function has been weakened, we perform a test called an echocardiogram. An echocardiogram is simply a scan of the heart. 
This test requires the probe to be pushed against the left side of your chest, covered in a special gel, and shows whether areas of the heart muscle have reduced pumping function as a result of the heart attack. The good news is that after a heart attack, the healing process begins quickly. Scar tissue may develop in the damaged area. This takes around four to six weeks, and it is important that your heart is given recovery time to allow this process to happen. Medication. After a heart attack, you will be prescribed several types of medications to go home with. Taking these medications as prescribed is important for reducing your risk of having another heart attack. Antiplatelets include aspirin, clopidogrel, ticagrelor. Antiplatelets work by making your blood less sticky, meaning blood clots can't form as well. These drugs are important in preventing clots in your arteries where stents may have been placed, and also in preventing a future heart attack. Aspirin is usually taken lifelong. Your second antiplatelet will only be needed for a certain period of time, which is usually 12 months. The ACE inhibitor reduces the amount of fluid the heart has to pump around your body so your heart doesn't have to work so hard. Your heart attack may have caused some damage to your heart, weakening its function. The ACE inhibitor helps to slow down the progression of this damage. The statin reduces the amount of cholesterol that your body makes and helps to reduce buildup of fatty deposits in your arteries. So statins reduce the risk of having a further heart attack and are beneficial even when your cholesterol is at a normal level. The beta blockers, such as bisoprolol, slow the heart down and help to maintain a regular steady heartbeat. This means your heart doesn't have to work so hard and also helps to reduce your blood pressure. The GTN spray widens the heart arteries for a brief period to reduce chest pain. If you have been prescribed this, you should carry this with you at all times and take it as advised by your nurse or pharmacist. With the exception of the second antiplatelet, all of these medications are usually long-term. They are known as secondary prevention medications and hence important for a healthy heart. You may experience side effects from your medications, but it is important to consult with a doctor or pharmacist before deciding to stop any of your medications. These medicines are to help your heart recover so that you can return to living a normal life as soon as possible. Your nurse or pharmacist can provide you with more information about your medications before you are discharged. Emotions. All illnesses are stressful, but if you've had a cardiac event, you are likely to feel frightened and anxious. Coming to terms with a heart attack can take time. You might feel frightened that it may happen again or be worried about not being able to do as much as you did before. Particularly in the early stages of recovery, you might question why this has happened to you and feel that it's not fair. These are quite normal reactions. You can expect to have good and bad days. If you are experiencing some of these emotions, it's important to talk about them with someone. If it's fear for the future or you think you are anxious or depressed, talk to your GP or your cardiac rehabilitation team. They will be able to support you and refer you for psychological support. Finding out more about your condition, the treatment you've had and your recovery can help relieve anxiety about your situation and may be able to set your mind at ease. This is one of the benefits of attending a cardiac rehabilitation program. Learning to recognize your own symptoms of stress and its causes are the first step towards managing it effectively. For many people, recovery from a heart attack gives them an opportunity to step back and reassess their lives. Some people have been living a healthy lifestyle already and may feel that it is not worth continuing. However, it is likely that without this healthy lifestyle, damage caused by the heart attack would have been much worse, so it is well worth continuing. For others, you have a chance to make positive changes to your lifestyle so that you can look forward to a better quality of life in the future. Going home. Most people look forward to leaving hospital and going home, but the first few weeks after a heart attack can be an anxious time. Many people wonder if they will have another heart attack. Unfortunately, having one heart attack does increase your risk of having another. However, if you take the medication that you've been prescribed and if you follow a healthy lifestyle, you can dramatically reduce that risk. Many people find they tire very easily in the early stages after a heart attack. This is normal and will usually pass as your strength and confidence return. There is no hard and fast rule about how quickly you will return to normal. Everyone is different. During the first few days after going home, try to do some household activities. Go up and down stairs a few times a day and do some short walks. As the weeks go by, aim to do a little more and go a bit further each day. It's natural to feel a bit nervous about exercising after a heart attack. But remember the heart is a muscle, and like any other muscle in the body, it needs exercise. Exercise will keep your heart in good condition. Getting out into the fresh air and doing some deep breathing exercises will help you feel better and lift your spirits. During your recovery at home, you'll have a chance to think about your lifestyle. There may be some areas that you'll want to change to reduce the risk of another heart attack. 
For some people, life after a heart attack can feel better than before. Risk factors. There are several risk factors which are known to put people at a higher risk of developing coronary artery disease. Some risk factors you can't control, such as family history, age, gender, and ethnicity. However, many risk factors are related to lifestyle and can be controlled. These include smoking, eating an unhealthy diet, and not exercising enough. If you are a smoker, no matter how long you've smoked for, quitting can help improve your health straight away. Stopping smoking is the single most important step you can take to reduce your risk of having a heart attack. Smokers are almost twice as likely to have a heart attack as people who have never smoked. There is support available to help you quit. You can ask your GP or local pharmacist for advice and support. The most important thing to remember is to aim for a healthy, balanced diet, including eating more fruit and vegetables. You should cut down on saturated fat, sugar and salt. To get the vitamins and minerals your body needs, you should aim to eat a variety of at least five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. They can be fresh, frozen, dried or canned. Along with fruit and vegetables, bread, potatoes, rice, pasta or cereals should make up the main part of your meal and wherever possible try to eat whole grain varieties. Try to include oats, beans and pulses in your diet as these along with fruit and vegetables contain fibre which helps lower cholesterol levels. Try to cut back on things like cakes, biscuits and pastries which are higher in saturated fats. You can also lower saturated fats by including low fat dairy products in your diet rather than full fat. However, be aware of low fat products that are high in sugar. High sugar intake is another risk factor for heart disease and can lead to excessive calorie intake, weight gain and raised levels of blood fats. A lot of people enjoy drinking alcohol. There's no reason why you should deprive yourself of the odd glass as long as you avoid excess. To keep health risk from alcohol to a low level, you should drink no more than 14 units a week for both men and women. Keep consumption to a maximum of two to three units a day. Physical activity is great for your heart. It helps to reduce the risk of coronary heart disease, lowers blood pressure, improves cholesterol levels and helps manage weight. You should aim to build up to 150 minutes of moderate intensive activity a week. An example of moderate intensive activity is brisk walking. One way of managing to do 150 minutes of exercise a week is to be active for 30 minutes a day at least five times per week. If you are not used to being active, then start slowly and gradually build up to 150 minutes a week over time. Sessions of 10 minutes at a time are a good way to start and walking is an ideal activity to begin with. Each time you do any physical activity, it's very important that you warm up first. This will prepare your muscles and heart for exercise. Cool down after exercise. At the end, don't stop suddenly. Instead, spend some time slowing down gradually. Don't do physical activity if you feel unwell and stop exercising if you're in pain or feel dizzy. These are abnormal responses to exercise and may be a result of overdoing it. You should discuss any of these responses with your GP or cardiac rehabilitation team. Ultimately, exercise should be a habit for life. Try to find something that you enjoy doing so that it will be easier to keep going. Cardiac Rehabilitation Cardiac rehabilitation programs are designed to offer support in making lifestyle changes as well as helping people build confidence so they can resume the activities they enjoyed before. The types of service will vary depending on the area you live in and the type of event you have had. Some services may offer telephone helpline or online support programs but most programs will offer face-to-face, group-based exercise and education classes. Cardiac rehabilitation is offered to everyone diagnosed with a heart attack, but programs vary for other cardiac conditions. If you are unsure, please ask your nurse. Cardiac rehabilitation is as much a part of your treatment plan as your medicines. It also aims to give you the information you need to look after your heart health and to keep you well in the future. Going to a cardiac rehab exercise program is a good way of making sure you start exercising at a level that is safe and effective for you. When you come to the end of the program, it's important to make sure you continue to make time to be physically active on a regular basis. You will be offered the option to be referred on to your local cardiac fitness instructor-led class. Your cardiac rehabilitation team can provide further information about this service. Thank you for watching. We hope this video supports you on your road to recovery.